Are you ready to get mad? We're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little uh, Twitter shitter fun. I did this last week, although it's not fun without uh, another person. But it's just a few things I found on Twitter that we can discuss, uh, if you would like. Um, sure, sure. All right, let's uh, fancy TV open. <laughs> That's right. That damn shitter was full. Let's see what we got here. Uh, so, did you see this? I don't know. Can you see that? Okay. I, I, you're going to have to this, read it for me. I can't see it from here. My eyes aren't very good anymore. So, this is a new warning, I think. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to follow somebody on Twitter, yeah, I'll totally read it. It says, are you sure you want to follow? And then it's the person you're trying to follow. This I've account. Seen I think it's new. I think it's new. It says uh, this account has repeatedly posted false information that was reviewed by <laughs> independent fact checkers or went against our community guidelines. AKA, you sure this guy's kind of an asshole? <laughs> That's why I think it's the best thing. I always love when they say. I always love when they say independent fact checkers. <laughs> Right, independent fact checkers. They keep talking about. And some jackasses they pay off to say shit's facts. You know that's <laughs> what it is. Hey, here's some money. Say this shit's true. Okay. <laughs> hey man, I check that shit. You're wrong. This shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So apparently that's a new thing. Uh, I hopefully. Yeah, uh, yeah I, haven't, I haven't seen that yet. Have, so have you encountered that yet? Following anybody? Or no, not yet. Um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I guess, uh, they haven't caught up to our troublemakers yet. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, none of us, uh, fall into that category, but, uh, the way things are going, you never know. So, you know, hell we're making up like, you know, little sixth grade words for, you know, for the pandemic, uh, and the shit that goes on with it just so they don't take you off the air. I mean, that's just, that's kind of ridiculous. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy because you got to try to walk a tightrope, you know, cause I know there's a lot of things I, I like to say and I try to put them as either questions or, <laughs> or, or how am I going to do it just, just to make sure and still try to get my point across. <laughs> I know. And, and it's like, you're just you're just telling common sense shit. You know you shouldn't have to walk across some tightrope, you know, or walk on eggshells just to get your point across when it's it's shit that everybody should, else should know. You know, I got uh, I got something else for you here that's uh, that's kind of fun and weird. And uh, let's see, let's see where that is. There we go. This is uh, you know those dogs, those robot dogs. They had the. Uh, they had the guns on them uh, last week. Yeah. So now they got one. They have uh, this says, so Hawaii has deployed a robot dog to scan homeless people for COVID at the taxpayer's expense of 150 large. And hopefully this will play. Uh, we got, you know, we got a little technology around. Yeah, I, think I, saw, I, saw this, I saw this one. Yeah, this is fucked up. And the Honolulu Police Department provided an update on its newest tool, a robot dog. Spot, the $150,000 robot purchased earlier this year, is used to screen individuals at homeless sites on Oahu. HBD says since the start of the pandemic, the sites have taken in more than 1,700 homeless individuals and have had only 14 positive COVID cases. They believe the mitigation procedures put in place and other technologies such as Spot have helped keep the numbers down. Having the ability to deploy something that can do all the interactions Spot. on a mobile, mobile platform and take the possibility of transmission out of the equation. For me, I, I really don't think that um, over the long term, $150,000 is a waste. Spot is able to take a person's temperature from seven feet away in a fraction of a second. It also has two-way communication capability and can deliver PPE, food, and water to someone who does test positive for COVID. The fuck is that? What the hell? First, it's like, all right, we got a gun. Spot's got a gun. Now it's just like, now I'm Dr. Dog. Uh, 
I could yeah. I could tell if, what if you're just hot you know what have you been running or something and you're like you know like you're gonna have some, you know you may still be 98.6 but like you may be radiating some heat right and you're like oh i'm gonna take a i'm gonna take a rest and here comes you know robot spot wow you know wait a minute <laughs> hey spot how you how you doing buddy ah! drama <laughs> A little bit of they, so they never, they never thought about spending taking that hundred and fifty thousand dollars and actually doing it something for the people who are actually homeless. <laughs> yeah, take the hundred fifty thousand and help the homeless not be homeless no more, and then you don't need no fucking robot dog going around going, "What's your temperature? What's your temperature?" Do, do, do. Yeah. Uh. yeah, they never, yeah, they never, they never, they never considered trying to, you know, like try to stop the homelessness. We're just gonna send spot around, <laughs> right? It's like. Well, we, we, we made sure that Buford couldn't, uh, he couldn't buy any bullets. So, uh, well, why didn't you just take his gun away? Uh, we, we didn't think about that either. Uh, I got something else here for you. I told you we got some crazy shit on here. So, you know, hang on just a moment. Let me get this. Uh, there we go. And, oh no, it's nighttime in the city wrong one see there's this thing uh it says eat bugs not bs um this is a thing where they're trying to get you to eat roaches and shit uh 69 69 <laughs> protein 2000 times less co2 than beef it's www.bug.recipes Hashtag all bug, <laughs> no bull. All right. Is that real? That's real. <laughs> Look, man, un unless you and I are tripping balls, that shit's real right there. Eating bugs. That's what they want. Who, who is it? Who is it that's promoting that? Who is it that's promoting that? I don't know. I'm going to, this way, bugs.recipes. Hang on a second. Now, now we're going to have to look this shit up. Dot recipes. All right. What? It, oh, what? Receipts? I don't know how to spell that shit. Fuck it. Uh, but they're talking about CO2. Are they just trying to say if we eat bugs, we'll be more environmentally friendly? I <laughs> guess. Or they, or they know shit's coming. Like some sort of apocalypse <laughs> is coming. It's like, Go dig your hole. Go dig your root cellar. All right. Go, go get you a bunch of canned shits. Go get you some MREs and get to starting to eat bugs right now. Cause right. you're gonna do it later. Like prepare yourself. Might as well prepare get yourself. That, familiar yourself with that taste now, because later you're gonna be having a Big Mac with like you know cicadas and shit in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah, I, I I thought that I thought that was funny. I was like, oh wait, they're going for a health angle. Then they're like, nah, they're uh, they just want you to eat bugs, dude. Um, <laughs> like uh, Hall and Oates said, I can't go for that. Uh, no, no, no can do. So we got uh, this thing here. Did you see this about the Quad City uh, Quad Cities DSA? Um, oh yes, yes, I, I saw that. Actually, I saw that a little while before we came on. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you you had seen some of these because uh, th this is uh, I think this is out of uh, where uh, the Quad Cities. I'm not sure where that exactly that is. Maybe uh, somebody in the chat will know that. Uh, I think it's somewhere like around Iowa or something. Anyways, uh, the Quad Cities DSA does not endorse the rally tonight at the John Deere Davenport Works, and we encourage our members not to participate. What the fuck, man? I'm like, okay. DSA says, oh, well, you know, we're trying to run people and get them into office. It's like, well, okay, that's they think electoral politics is good. But you also have to have some direct action to go with it. And this is direct action. And they're saying, like, well, there's, uh, based on the language of the injunction, the union, its members, blah, 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 a bunch of fucking wimps and don't want to do the shit. Uh, paraphrasing, but it's basically what the shit says. So, um, 
Yeah, but I, I mean, think that's the first time. I think I saw them do that with another strike. I, I can't remember where it was. I can't remember which company it was. So this is like a um, a constant thing. You know, it's amazing how they talk about how we need all of this action. And whenever there's a time where somebody wants to protest or strike, the same people that tell us we should be protesting and striking are the people that all of a sudden, when it happens, try to give us a reason why we shouldn't be protesting or striking. You know, it, it almost <laughs> it almost seems like um, we all being set up. <laughs> almost seems that way. Like maybe these people are actually not working for us. I know this isn't smell of vision, but I, <laughs> I smell bullshit. <laughs> big, 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 uh, big smelling the bullshit there. There are your bulls, right there with the crickets. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, they, that was the thing, though, uh, when they got called out, because in the handbook, it says, like, they were going to, like, force the vote on, uh, you know, trying to hold uh, Nancy Pelosi accountable and try and shake her and stuff. And then they said, nah, we just kidding. <laughs> we just fucking around. We, we didn't know what we was talking about. Um, so, anyway, so I, I, I tend to get... Uh, uh, into let's say interesting conversations with uh, people from DSA online, and uh, let's just say uh, it doesn't stay interesting very long. Finally, just something else in case you wanted to get pissed off. Um, if your blood pressure was too low, Daryl, I got that. I got you. All right, I, I'm gonna raise it for right, you a little see, bit. Let's see what you got. Yeah, this is the this is the cool whip on the shit Sunday right here. This lady with uh it's been a minute since I did one of these. Follow along f for a day in the life as we welcome first lady Dr. Jill, Jill Biden to the Bronx to engage teachers and staff prep for hearings, do laundry and stream with Bernie. Whew. Now to get ready for tomorrow. And so, unfortunately, we got to listen to this because reasons. Okay, so I very often try to record a little day in the life for you all, but I usually am not able to because I try, then the day gets too busy. I can't film myself narrating the thing and do the thing. Anyways, today I'm going to try to change that because First Lady... Jill Biden is coming to visit right here in the Bronx, our district, PS 83, and I'm the Congresswoman to receive her today. So what does that look like? Our first thing I needed to do this morning was that I needed to go to a clinic and get a COVID test that was witnessed and administered by a... All right, all right, you get the gist. <laughs> I don't know if you uh, had your meal for the evening or not, but I didn't want to see it come out. Because of that vomitous <laughs> bullshit. So, she cut, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Jenny on the block. Uh, back in uh, back in the Bronx. She's ready to hang out with her peeps at her home slices. And she's bringing some old white lady with her. That's some, that's some oh, 80s. Joe that's some 80s sitcom shit right there. You know, she's from the hood and Jill Biden's not. She's coming back to the Bronx. The Bronx and the white bitch will be right back. Um, I just can't take the, the thought of hearing, hearing AOC and Jill Biden like in the same conversation. <laughs> Can you I'm imagine what the, Jill Biden, you know, like Jill Biden is like the weekend, like you know, the movie Weekend at Birdies. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the way I look at her. Like she's like dragging Biden around, you know. <laughs> the only thing she wanted to be first lady so bad. I, I mean, you know, this this is a woman who does not love her husband. <laughs> I mean, you can see that. <laughs> you know? He said, "Listen, Joe, Joe, we are going to the White House. Joe, I will be first lady." <laughs> Bitch. I have waited too damn long, and I have been with your stupid ass for too damn long. You've ran for president like eight fucking times, and now you finally won. We're going to... I'm going to change these fucking curtains over here, too. Fuck these curtains. Why do you bring oh, that bitch man, back that to the is. Bronx? Uh, you imagine her, like, walking around just like, uh, oh, oh, what? See, this is, this is what they call a bodega. 
Uh, but they, uh, <laughs> do they sell drugs there? Uh, well, some of them, but you know, not technically all of them. You, you know, it's who you know. It's all you know. It's New York. Yeah, ain't nobody want that bitch around there. I've I've been a, I've been a, but I mean, where she's from, uh, AOC. I don't think it, she's not from South Bronx. She's like more from uh, huh? Queens, Queens Bronx, like somewhere weird. Up yeah, there. yeah. I know, I know that's her district. You know, it's she just, says it's, Bronx. Know parts of Queens. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, it's probably more because uh, it's probably more Queens than than Bronx. I mean, there is Bronx, but you know, it ain't South Bronx. You know, she ain't wearing Kevlar or nothing. So, you know, no. she uh, <laughs> she she don't she looks like she might blow away in the next wind that comes by. You know, she don't look too street tough. You know what I mean? So, I'm not saying. You know, she might be a ninja. Who knows? You know, we all have secret lives. <laughs> no, um, I, don't, I don't think I don't think the AOC is you know growing up and growing up and surviving the hood. But anyways, this she, she really grew up in Westchester, didn't she? Or somewhere. Yeah, I think so. It was like she went to some yeah. fancy school or something, and yeah. you know, that's like me saying I I'm from New Orleans, but you know I live like a hundred miles away over in yeah. Mississippi. You know, but you know it's so close. I you know it's a, it's like a suburb. Mississippi is basically <laughs> South Mississippi is basically a suburb of New Orleans. So, uh, you know, but. You know, it used to get me chicks back in the day. They're like, you know, they're like, "Oh, you, you from New Orleans? Hey, that's cool." I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm from New Orleans. Ooh. Um. <laughs>